So, uh, we have introduced the concept of uh, probability. So, probability theory deals with the experiments which are stochastic in nature or random. Now, we have seen that when we are studying the concept of uh, random experiments, the outcomes are described and we call them events. So, events are subsets of the sample space. And at various points we have seen that things can be very, very descriptive and therefore cumbersome to describe. For example, uh, we have considered something like uh, coin tossing problems or die throwing problems etcetera. Suppose the number is large in place of say 2 dies, we have 4 dies. So, let us extend this concept. Suppose we are considering, now you take the analogy to the real life situations in case of uh, say die throwing. So, in a die we consider head and tail as the experiment. So, either a head will come or tail. You consider it with the child birth. Suppose we observe 100 child births. Now, then if you look at the number of possibilities, it can be very, very much formidable if we even if we try to consider any events. However, many times the exact description of the event is not important rather what it conveys. For example, if we are considering hitting of a target. So, for example, missiles are fired on target and suppose 100 missiles are fired. Then we may not be interested that which first missile hit or second missile successfully hit or seventh missile successfully hit. What would be interested is to know whether the target was demolished or not which would have been possible if a particular number of the missiles would have hit. For example, if more than or equal to say 10 missiles hit, then we can say that the target is hit successfully. So, we are not interested in the order in which the missiles are hitting successfully etcetera. Now, in a similar manner there are various events where the number or you can say a numerical characteristic is enough to describe the event properly. Therefore, we use the concept of random variables. So, in case of random variables what we do? We associate with each sample point a real number. So, random variable is a real valued function you can say. So, we start with we have as before let omega b p be a probability is space. So, we had a random experiment, the collection of all the possible outcomes that is the sample space is omega. Then script B denotes a sigma field of subsets of omega and P is the probability function defined on that. Then a random variable say x is a real valued function defined on omega. So, basically x is a function from omega into r. Now, you can see here we had a sigma field of subsets of omega. Therefore, there should be a correspondence with that. Let c be a sigma field of subsets of R. Then for every set C in script C, X inverse C must belong to B. Now, this is a condition of that X is a measurable function. So, we qualify this statement here by saying a real valued measurable function because whatever values the random variable will be taking the inverse image of that should have corresponding thing in the set of events in the class of events so that the corresponding probabilities one can talk about. Uh, now, without uh, giving too much of the theoretical details, 
let us discuss the probability distributions of the random variables and uh, how do we describe that and we then we look at the classification of the random variables. So, first thing that we notice here is that what are the types of random variables that we may have. So, let us consider. So, let us consider say toss of a coin. Now, if you toss of a coin, you can consider head tail as the thing. However, we are interested to know whether the head has occurred or not. Then we can define a random variable x as saying say x h is equal to 1, x t is equal to 0. What does this do? This means that if the head has occurred, the indicator is 1, otherwise the indicator is 0. So, this random variable x actually from the value you can determine whether a head has occurred or not. Now, correspondingly you can define the probabilities. Suppose the coin is fair. If coin is fair, what is the probability that x is equal to 1? Now, this is nothing but the probability of occurrence of head. So, that is becoming half. Similarly, what is the probability that x is equal to 0? That is the probability that a tail has occurred that will be equal to half. Now, this description is actually a more general description because we are saying x defined from omega. So, that means it has an argument. So, we say x omega. So, actually this probability x equal to 1 is actually the probability of the set of all those omegas for which x omega is equal to 1. But for convenience, we simply write probability x is equal to 1. Similarly, this is nothing but probability of, of all those omegas such that x omega is equal to 0. Now, let us consider some other examples. Suppose in place of one coin, we consider toss of n identical coins and of course, they are all fair and the tosses are done independently. We look at x as the say number of heads. x is the number of heads. Now, you see if you are tossing n coins, let me take a special case say n is equal to 3. If you take n is equal to 3, what will be your sample space? All the 3 heads are 2 heads and a tail which will have 3 combinations or 1 head and 2 tails or all the 3 tails. There will be total 8 possibilities. Now, if you see the allotment of x, x will allocate the value 3 for h h h, x will allocate the value 2 for h h t, it will allocate value 2 for h t h, it will allocate value 2 for t h h also. Similarly, if I consider h t t x of t h t x of t t h these are all 2 and what is x of t t t that is equal to sorry this is equal to 1 because here 1 head has occurred and what is the probability of uh, what is the x t t t that will be 0 because there are no heads here. So, if we want to write down the probability of say x is equal to 0 that will be equal to 1 by 8 probability of x is equal to 1. Now, this is not 1 by 8 because there are 3 possibilities here. So, it is equal to 3 by 8. Similarly, what is the probability of x is equal to 2 that is also 3 by 8 what is the probability that x equal to 3 
that is equal to 1 by 8. Now, this allotment of the probabilities to individual values, this is also called a probability distribution. So, let us consider the case here. Here, I am able to strictly define what are the values that the random variable has been taking. Now, in some other cases, we may say, for example, if I consider life of a bulb and I am denoting it by x. So, that means a bulb is uh, started to burn and then how long it burns that life is x. Then what are the values that x will take? See, suppose we are measuring the life in say hours, then x may take value say 1 hour, it may take value 10 hours, it may take value 10.3 hours, it may take value 10.32 hours and so on. That means, the set of values of x can be greater than 0 or you may say greater than or equal to 0 also because there may be an odd bulb which gets fused as soon as it is started. So, either you put x greater than 0 or you put x greater than 0. When the value of the random variable is in an interval, then you are able to say that you are saying that the random variable takes uncountably infinite number of values. The two examples that I discussed before in this second example and in the first example, here the random variable was taking two values and here the random variable is taking three, uh, four different values. That means, you can say finite. You may have some other case also. For example, you consider x is the number of attempts to hit a target. Now, you make the first attempt, you may hit the target. In the second attempt, you may hit the target. You may attempt and third attempt, you may hit the target and so on. That means, what will be the corresponding probabilities? What will be the corresponding values that random variable will take? x can take value 1, 2, 3 and so on. These are countably infinite number of values. So, now I will distinguish between discrete random variable and a continuous random variable. When a random variable takes finite or countably infinite number of values, it is called a discrete random variable. And continuous random variable when a random variable takes values on an interval it is called a continuous random variable. Uh, there can be also a mixture of these two that means partly the random variable is discrete and partly it is continuous. Now, such random variables are called mixed random variables. So, a mixed random variable is a mixture of the two that is partly discrete and partly continuous. Now, we talk about probability distribution of a random variable.
Now we have seen that if we have omega b p as a probability space and x is a random variable defined on this that means it is transforming this probability space to another probability space let us call it R C Q. Now what is the correspondence here? For any C in C you associate Q of C. Now Q of C is the probability of x inverse C. Now this x inverse C will be a set in for some b here. So, you are able to allocate the probability of this. So, q is then called the probability distribution of the random variable x. Now let me describe in detail the special cases. For example, you, you may have a discrete random variable, you have a continuous random variable. In both the cases, the description of the probability distribution is not the same. Now if you look at the example of coin tossing problem, one coin or three coins, let us look at this. Here we are able to allocate the probabilities for the individual values that the random variable takes. For example, here random variable x can take only two values 0 and 1. So, probability of x equal to 0 is half, probability x equal to 1 is half. The total sum is equal to 1. This is nothing but the probability distribution of the random variable x. In the Since x is discrete here, we give it a name probability mass function. You may consider another example also when we had considered tossing of three identical coins independently. Here the random variable x is taking four possible values 0, 1, 2 and 3. You can see here probability of x equal to 0 is 1 by 8, probability x equal to 1 is 3 by 8, probability x equal to 2 is 3 by 8 and probability x equal to 3 is 1 by 8. If you sum these probabilities you get 1. So, this allotment of the probabilities is the probability mass function for this random variable x. On the other hand, if you consider the random variable x which is denoting the life of a bulb, this is a continuous random variable because the random variable is taking values over an interval. Here we cannot allocate the probabilities of each point here. However, we will be allocating certain density or you can say probabilities for intervals. So, you will have a probability density function in this particular case. Let me explain this through various examples here. So, probability mass function of a discrete random variable. So, let x be a discrete random variable taking values on say x. Naturally, x is a subset of the real line. Since here we are considering only finite or countable number of values, we usually use a separate notation uh, for the set of values for the random variable. In the case of continuous random variable, since we are talking about the intervals, we usually consider the real line and of course any subset of that also. So, a probability mass function of x, so we denote it by p x x the subscript x denotes that the random variable we are taking and small x denotes the value taken by this random variable. This x will belong to this. P x x i is positive for all x i belonging to x and secondly the sum 
over all the values is equal to 1. And thirdly, this function is actually denoting the probability that the random variable x will take value small x i. So, if you look at these examples here, then in this particular case your p x 0 is half and p x 1 is half. Similarly, if you look at this example here p x 0 is 1 by 8, p x 1 is 3 by 8, p x 2 is 3 by 8, p x 3 is 1 by 8. So, let us consider some more examples of uh, random variables here. Suppose rankings in a tennis tournament consisting of top 10 players in the world. are determined by the points earned by the players throughout the year. Now, in the year say some particular year let me say year 2003 there were 5 Russian women in top 10 women players of the world. Assuming, assume each ranking order of top 10 players is equally likely. Then on the basis of this I define the random variable as let x denote the highest ranking by a Russian player. Now, you see here there are 10 positions. So, let me give ranking like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, there are total 5 Russian players among this and 5 players from other countries. So, what will happen? A Russian player may occur at the first place, it may occur at the second place, it may occur at the third place for the first time, it may occur at the fourth place, it may occur at the fifth place, it may occur at the sixth place. But it cannot occur below that because there are 5. So, even if all the last 5 places are occupied by Russians, then the highest ranking will be 6th. So, highest ranking can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, x can take values here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Let us calculate the probability mass function of x. What is the probability that x is equal to 1? Now, this means that the position 1 is occupied by a Russian player and this Russian player could be any of the 5 players. So, this can be chosen in 5 C1 ways. Now, out of the remaining 9 places, any of the 9 orderings are possible. So, 9 factorial and total number of possibilities is 
10 factorial. So, this is equal to half. So, probability that a Russian player will be having the highest ranking is half which is certainly very high, but it is expected because out of 10, 5 players are Russians. What is the probability that x equal to 2? Now, if x equal to 2 that means the top place is occupied by a non-Russian player. There are 5 non-Russian players, so that can be done in 5 C1 ways. The second position is occupied by a Russian player which can be chosen in 5 C1 ways and the remaining 8 positions any of the 8 players can occur in any order. So, that will be 8 factorial ways, total number of ways is 10 factorial. So, after simplification this turns out to be 5 by 18 that is nearly 0.2778. Now, in a similar way you can calculate probability x equal to 3 that will be that in the first two places other players can occur that will be in 5 p 2 ways into in fact 5 c 2 ways 2 players and they can interchange their order. So, 2 into 5 c 2 and then in the next place a Russian player and then remaining 7 places can be occupied by other 7 in any order. This is turning out to be 5 by 36. So, like that you can calculate 5 p x 4 that will be equal to 3 factorial into 5 c 3 into 5 c 1 into 6 factorial divided by 10 factorial that will be equal to 5 by 84 and p x 5 in a similar way will be equal to 4 factorial 5 c 4 5 c 1 into 5 factorial divided by 10 factorial that will be equal to 5 by 252 and probability x is equal to 6 will be equal to 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by 10 factorial because if 6th position is that highest by the Russian that means last 5 places are Russian players they can be in any of the 5 factorial orders and the top 5 are non-Russian they will be in any of the 5 factorial ways. So, total number of ways is 10 factorial after simplification this value is 1 by 252. So, this is p x 6. So, you can see the this is the description of the distribution if you add these numbers 1 by 252, 5 by 252, 5 by 84, 5 by 36, 5 by 18 and half the total is equal to 1. So, this is the complete probability distribution of the random variable x which is denoting the highest ranking by a Russian player. Now, at the same time it you can look at the relative values here. If there are 5, the probability of all of them being at the bottom is extremely small 1 by 252. The probability of one of them being highest is actually very very high it is 0 0.5 which is higher than any other possibility here. Let me give another example of a uh, discrete distribution. random numbers 1 to n are generated successively until a number is repeated. Let x denote the number of trials. Okay. So, we generate a number suppose first number is 3, second time we generate a number it may be say n minus 1 and so on. Whenever a number is coming which is already appeared once then we stop this is called each number of trials. So, x is the number of trials. So, what are the possible values? x can take values 2, 3 and so on up to n plus 1 because if there are n numbers then certainly in, in n plus 1th trial a number will be repeated. So, what is p x 2? What is the probability that x equal to 2? 
that will be equal to now that means whatever number has occurred in the first place the same number occurs again. Now there are total n numbers in the first place any number would have occurred the same number occurring means the possibility is 1 total number of possibilities n. What is the probability that x equal to 3? That means in the previous one the number is not repeated and thereafter it is repeated. Now there are two numbers available. So it will become 2 by n that is basically twice n minus 1 by n is square. Now like th that you can continue what is px4 that will be equal to n minus 1 by n n minus 2 by n 3 by n that is equal to 3 into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by n cube and so on. Let me write for the ith one what is probability that x equal to i that is n minus 1 by n n minus 2 by n and so on n minus i plus 2 by n and in the ith one any of the previous i minus 1 number should occur. So that we can write as i minus 1 into n minus 1 and so on n minus i plus 2 by n to the power i minus 1. Finally, n plus 1 that is equal to n minus 1 by n and so on 1 by n and lastly n by n because in the last the number is certain to come this probability is 1 here. So that is equal to n factorial divided by n to the power n. Actually this should sum to 1 I will just show it through suppose I take n is equal to 3 then what is px2 that will be 1 by 3 what is px3 that will be equal to 4 by 9 what is px4 that will be equal to 2 by 9. So if you add these two 6 by 9 that is 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 that is equal to 1. So this is a valid probability mass function here. Now in the case we are having continuous random variable then we cannot allocate probabilities for individuals. So what we will do in that case we consider probability density function. So we have the concept of density function then probability density function of a continuous random variable. Let x be a continuous random variable then f x x is the probability density function of x if it should be non negative function on the whole real line the integral of the function over the whole range should be 1 and probability of any interval it is given by the integral of the density function over that and of course here when we say a less than x less than b since it is integral this is same as a less than or equal to x less than b or we may say a less than x less than or equal to b or we may say a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b these are all equivalent statements because it is an integral here. Let us take an example here. consider say f x is equal to 6 x into 1 minus x where x is between 0 and 1 it is equal to 0 elsewhere that means for values of x outside this interval. 
Now let us look at whether it is a valid probability density function or not. See 6x into 1 minus x, if x lies between 0 to 1, it is always positive and other places it is equal to 0. So, the first condition that it is a non-negative function, it is satisfied here. Let us look at the integral, integral of fx. Now, from minus infinity to infinity, this integral reduces to 0 to 1, 6x into 1 minus x dx. So, this value you can see the integral of this is 3, x, x is integrated to x square by 2. So, this becomes 3 minus 6 x square. So, it is integrated to 2 x cube. So, again 2. So, this value is 1. Suppose we want what is probability of say 0 less than x less than half. Then I will have to integrate this f x dx over the integral 0 to half. That means, it will be equal to 6 x into 1 minus x dx from 0 to half that is equal to as I just now calculated x integrated to x square by 2. So, 3 x square. So, 1 by 4 minus 6 x square that is giving us 2 x cube that is 1 by 2 cube that is 1 by 2 8 that is 3 by 4 minus 1 by 4 that is equal to half. Suppose we want what is the probability that 1 by 4 less than x less than 3 by 4. Then in that case, this will be integral from 1 by 4 to 3 by 4 x into 1 minus x dx. So, once again this can be evaluated. We give the concept of cumulative distribution function. Cumulative distribution function of a let x be a random variable, the function capital F defined by capital F x that is probability of the set x less than or equal to x. That means, the probability of the set where x omega is less than or equal to x. This is called the cumulative distribution function of x. Now, you, this you can see when I defined the probability mass function or the probability density function. I was making a distinction between discrete and continuous. When we had a discrete random variable, we defined probability mass function. When we had a continuous random variable, we defined a probability density function. But when we define a cumulative distribution function, this distinction is not there. That means, this is a more general function. It can be used for mixture random variables etcetera also. Certainly, this will satisfy certain properties. Because when we say probability x less than or equal to x, it has a different meaning here because if I increase the value of x, this set increases. Therefore, it will have certain desirable properties. Properties of a CDF. The first property is that as x tends to minus infinity, this goes to 0. Second property is that as x tends to plus infinity, it goes to 1. Now, the proofs of these statements are not very difficult to observe. As x tends to minus infinity, this set will become empty set. Therefore, the probability will become 0. As x tends to plus infinity, this set will become the full real line. Therefore, the probability will become, this set will become full omega. So, the probability will become 1 then f is a non decreasing function that is if x1 is less than x2 then f of x1 is less than or equal to f of x2 now this is again understandable here 
because if I increase the value of x, the set will become bigger and by the monotonicity probability uh, property of the probability function, this probability will increase or at least it will be non-decreasing. Therefore, this function f is non-decreasing. Another important property is that f is continuous from right at every point. That is, if I consider f of x plus h from the positive side, then this is equal to f of x. That is once again because of the definition, I am considering here less than or equal to. So, if I approach from x plus h to x, then this value will be attained. Therefore, the function is continuous from right. Conversely, every function f satisfying these four properties is CDF of a random variable. Now, what is the name cumulative is coming here? The cumulative word is coming because it is considering in some sense all the probability up to the point x. So, if I increase x then up to that point then we are considering the probability. So, that is why it is like something like adding up of the probabilities. Since we are having the classification in discrete and continuous, we can actually look at the relationship between the cumulative distribution function with the probability mass function and the probability density function. So, we can say here if x is discrete then p x x i it is equal to f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 where the points x1, x2 and so on belong to x in the sequence and f of x can be written as sigma probability xi, xi less than or equal to x. If x is continuous, then CDF is integral f t d t and the density function is nothing but the derivative of this almost everywhere. That means in the case of continuous random variable the CDF is an absolutely continuous function. I give the concept of expectation and moments. Let x be a random variable. So, let us consider say discrete random variable. We define mathematical expectation of x or expected value of x or average value of x as sigma x i p x x i provided the series on the right converges absolutely. If x is continuous, we define expectation x is equal to integral x f x dx and once again provided the integral is absolutely convergent.
Now, using this concept, we can generalize this. We can call mu. So, if we have g x a function such that g x is also a random variable, we define expectation of g x is equal to sigma g of x i p x x i if x is discrete and it is integral g x f x x d x if x is continuous. And of course, absolute convergence is required. So, we are then able to define mu k prime, it is equal to expectation of x to the power k for k equal to 1, 2 and so on. This is called kth non-central moment of the random variable x or kth moment about the origin and we define mu k is equal to expectation of x minus mu 1 prime to the power k. Now, what is mu 1 prime? If I put k equal to 1 here, I get expectation x here that is expectation x minus expectation x whole to the power k. This is called kth central moment of random variable x and of course, whenever these values exist that means absolute convergence of the corresponding series or the integral is assumed here. Now, mu 1 is 0, mu 1 prime that is expectation x is called the mean of x or the average of x etcetera these are the names and mu 2 here if I consider that is expectation of x minus mu 1 prime square that is called variance of x and square root of variance this is called standard deviation of random variable x. We also define see we may have different shapes of the distributions. For example, if we make a shape like this, then this looks like a symmetric shape. If we make a shape like this, it does not look symmetric. If we make a shape like this, this also does not look symmetric. So, if the shape is not symmetric, we may call it skewed that is positively skewed or negatively skewed. What is positively skewed? If it is positively skewed, it has a long tail to the right. If it is negatively skewed, it has a long tail to the left. A symmetric distribution is like this. So, we define a measure of skewness as let me call it beta 1 it is equal to mu 3 by mu 2 to the power 3 by 2. Similarly, you have a concept of high peak, low peak, a normal peak etcetera. So, this is called normal peak of a curve, this is flat curve and this is high peak. This is called the property of kurtosis and we define a measure of kurtosis as our peakedness measure of kurtosis or 
peakedness as mu4 by mu2 square minus 3 let me call it beta 2 uh, let me explain many of these concepts through some example so let us consider say let f be a continuous random variable with probability density function given by say f x is equal to 0 if x is less than 0 it is equal to x by 4 if x is between 0 and 1 it is equal to 3 by 4 if 1 is less than x less than 2 it is equal to 3 minus x by 4 if 2 is less than or equal to x less than 3 and it is equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 3. Now for this let us analyze this uh, PDF here. First thing that you can observe here if I integrate this f x over the whole range then it is equal to integral of x by 4 from 0 to 1 integral of 3 by 4 from 1 to 2 plus integral of 3 minus x by 4 from 2 to 3 and I am sorry this last one should be 0 here this is not correct here this is 0 here. So, if you integrate this you will get 1 by 8 plus 3 by 4 plus this will also give me 1 by 8. So, that is equal to 1. So, this is a valid probability density function you can see here the value is non negative and the integral over the whole range is equal to 1. Let us see what will be the cumulative distribution function, what will be the mean etcetera. Let us look at the mean. So, mean will be calculated by x f x dx. Now, once again you see the density is having a positive value only in the interval 0 to 3. So, this will become x square by 4 dx from 0 to 1 plus 3 x by 4 dx from 1 to 2 plus x into 3 minus x by 4 2 to 3. So, now these are integrals and you can simplify this the value turns out to be 3 by 2. Similarly, suppose we want to calculate variance x. Now, variance formula we have given here variance is defined to be mu 2 that is expectation of x minus 3 by 2 square. So, it is equal to expectation of x minus mu 1 prime that is 3 by 2 square. Now, once again this integral is only in the interval 0 to 3. So, we can do the integral the value turns out to be 1 by 4 if I want to calculate the cumulative distribution function for this that is f x. Now, this is nothing but integral of f t dt from minus infinity to x. Now, the density is 0 up to 0. So, this value will not come here this is simply equal to 0 for x less than 0. Now, for 0 to x it is t by 4. So, the integral will become t square by 8 that is x square by 8 for 0 less than or equal to x less than 1. It is equal to similarly 6 x minus 5 by 8 for 1 less than or equal to x less than 2. It is equal to 1 minus 3 minus x square by 8 for 2 less than or equal to x less than 3. It is equal to 1 for x greater than or equal to 3. Let us take uh, one or two of uh, the discrete case also which we have discussed earlier and let me show the calculation of expectations etcetera. Let us take this problem here. 
probability of x equal to 2 is 1 by 3, probability x equal to 3 is 4 by 9, probability x equal to 4 is 2 by 9. So, what will be expectation here? Expectation will be the value that is sigma x i p x i that is the values multiplied by their probability. So, this will be 2 into 1 by 3 plus 3 into 4 by 9 plus 4 into 2 by 9 that is equal to 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 that is plus 8 by 9 that is equal to 26 by 9. Similarly, if I want to calculate expectation x square that will become sigma x i square probability x equal to x i. If I want to calculate variance, now for variance we can simplify from this formula. It is expectation of x minus expectation x whole square. This if simplify it becomes expectation x square minus expectation x whole square. So, this can be calculated once again by using the same method here. We also define the concept of median, quartile etcetera using the locations. For example, a point which divides the curve into two equal parts that means this probability is half, this probability is half, then this point will be called the median. So, we say m is the median of x if probability x less than or equal to m is greater than or equal to half, probability x greater than or equal to m is greater than or equal to half. We may define quartiles or in general quantiles. A quantile of order p is say q p if probability x less than or equal to q p is greater than or equal to p and probability x greater than or equal to q p is greater than or equal to 1 minus p. That means, if I have locations on the distribution, this probability is p, this probability is 1 minus p, then this is pth quantile. Uh, this definition is slightly more general to take care of the discrete cases also. So, for example, in this particular case, the median will be 3 by 2 because here f of 3 by 2 that is equal to 6 into 3 by 2 minus 5 by 8 that is equal to 9 minus 5 that is 4 by 8 that is equal to half. So, the probability is half up to this point. In fact, if you can see this curve, this is a symmetric curve. If you plot this from 0 to 1, it is x by 4, then from 1 to 2, it is constant 3 by 4 and from 2 to 3, it is reducing. So, this becomes actually a continuous curve with a specific point here. So, this is symmetric about 3 by 2. So, we have discussed the concept of random variables, their probability distributions, we have discussed the classification into discrete and continuous random variables, we have discussed the concept of cumulative distribution function, we have discussed the concept of mean, variance, moments median and quantiles. In the next lectures, we will be discussing specific distributions, for example, specific discrete distributions and specific continuous distributions.